history, a great history of playing some great games against them. I think our overall series is tied up at 33, 33, and four. And so uh, what a great opportunity. Uh, I love that our fans uh, during the holiday season will have an opportunity to come down, conveniently drive down, fly in down to Charlotte uh, to take on a, a great game between, like I said, two former ACC rivals. Um, I know as a coach, I'm excited because of the extra practices uh, that come along with this opportunity, as well as us still recruiting down in that region of the country, uh, an opportunity to take the Maryland brand down to, uh, to North Carolina. But most of all, I'm happy for our players. Um, they've earned the right. They've laid a tremendous foundation that we're excited to build upon um, and our seniors uh, to be able to go out with, uh, in, with an opportunity to play a really, a really great game down in, in Charlotte. Uh, to me, it's, it's really what it's all about. It's rewarding uh, this 2022 football family, as well as the uh, seniors that have exhausted their eligibility. And we're looking forward to a great week in Charlotte, as well as playing a great game in an NFL stadium. Um, and so with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Thanks, Coach. Reminder to please send me a chat if you have a question. And then when you ask the question, just please address who it's for, whether it be Coach or or Danny Morrison. Um, we'll start with Ryan McFadden. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, first, I hope you're enjoying that cigar and wine from T.O. and Ocho Cinco. Uh, but I wanted to ask about um, Talia. I know he got banged up quite a bit down the stretch. I was wondering, is there still expect is there expectations for him to play in this bowl game or if he's willing to, is he going to opt out due to uh, health concerns or whatnot? No, not at all. He's been practicing. We've had two uh, practices last week kind of to get him back going. Um, his injuries have not been uh, major injuries. He came back and finished the game, obviously, against Rutgers and, and broke the record there. So, you know, the expectation is Talia's been here working with the team, uh, partaking in all of our you know, PRP player run practices, as well as our bowl prep. So really excited for him to be able to continue uh, playing in a, in a Maryland uniform. And, and I know he's excited about it as well to be able to go down to Charlotte. We'll go to Alex Flum. Coach Locks, how's it going? What's up, Alex? How are you? Not too much. I'm good. Uh, you know, as you guys found out about this bowl game today, for you guys, um, Ohio State and Michigan also both making the college football playoff game. I'm just curious for you, just getting this another good bowl game for you guys second year in a row and also seeing that there's two teams in the college football playoff that you guys went toe-to-toe -to -toe with and nearly beat. I, I mean, just how much pride does that give you in this program right now and how much optimism does it give you for what you're trying to build? You know, I think the pride we have is not about almost beating because that's not where the direction we're trying to take this thing. I think what it did was it shows the trajectory of what our program can be and, and what we're headed toward. But obviously, uh, two strong teams really, I think, solidifies and stamps that the Big Ten is one of the, if not the best conference in, in college football. And each week we get a chance to play teams in this league and they prepare us for opportunities like the one we have down in Charlotte with the Dukes Mayo Bowl. Uh, really happy to see us get two teams in there um, from the Big Ten. Uh, it's a tough league, especially on the eastern side of the division in which we've had to play. Uh, we're just really thankful that uh, we've earned the opportunity to play in another great uh, bowl game in back-to-back -back years. Uh, like you talked about, you know, playing two of our top teams close, but that's, like I said, that's not what we're about. I think if anything, it shows the trajectory of what we can be and what we're working towards becoming. So looking forward to getting down to Charlotte and continuing uh, to build this thing. Thank you. Yep. We'll go to Emily Giambava. Hey, Micah, the stockings are a nice touch in there too. Um, oh, thank you. The best is ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, so I was just going to ask, you always talk about how important this is for the young players. What what specifically are you hoping to see out of them in terms of their development through these next few weeks of practice? Yeah, as I said before, once you get into the bowl cycle, like we've been able to do the last couple of years, uh, it's kind of the rich get richer because instead of being at home and your season being done and the next opportunity you have to develop your team is in spring ball, these 15 or however many practices or opportunities that we'll have, which we started on Thursday or last week, are, are just, I mean, you can't even put a price tag on them because we start over from scratch with the fundamentals. Uh, we reinstall our offense because a lot of these young players have been 
part of the scout team where they kind of line up and do the things that other teams do. So this gives them a chance to advance themselves and develop themselves. As we did a year ago, you'll see a lot of these young players get opportunities to play in this game kind of as a, a showcase because this is really the start of our 23 season as opposed to the end of our 22 as we kind of approach and how we approach bowl games. So uh, these practices, are you can't put a price tag on them for the younger players. And I know last year seeing a guy like Roman Hemby and Antoine Littleton uh, was kind of like their coming out party in the pinstripe bowl. And I would expect that there'll be some young players that'll make some plays for us in this game that'll be able to use this uh, game in, in Charlotte as the same type of uh, same type of opportunity. And, and just a quick uh, question, is, is the plan for Mike Miller to stay with you guys through the bowl or no? No, Mike is going to start his work down at UNC Charlotte. We're excited for him, his family, the opportunity to be home. Uh, but they've got work to do there, and, and we you know, wish Mike well as he moves forward in his career. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. We'll go to Olivia Garvey. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Happy holidays to you and the family. Hey, Olivia. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I just want to know, you know, this 2020 season, this 2022 team, how do you describe the identity going into this bowl game? How do you describe the identity of this team? You know, I think the biggest thing is it's taken on the personality of the, the locker room, the 18 seniors that exhausted their eligibility. Uh, these were some kids that have gone through a lot during their time here at Maryland. Uh, and have continued to persevere, have shown great resiliency in terms of how they've overcome tough situations. Uh, you know, again, I came in and inherited most of this group uh, for some of the guys that I brought in. Um, they came in with me as we finished year four. Um, they all have bought into what, what, what it takes to build a championship program. And it starts with the, the 18 guys that have exhausted their eligibility. That they've given the blood, sweat and tears. Uh, they stayed connected and committed, which was going into this season really important for us to get back to this 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 type of situation where we have an opportunity to play in a great bowl like the Duke's Mayo Bowl. And a lot of credit goes to these players, which is what this this bowl game is, is a reward for them. But make you know, make no mistake. The goal is to go down and, and put our best foot forward to try to find a way to get the, the, the extra win. And Emily asked about the younger players what about the older players you know this is their final game what is your message to them as they say goodbye after uh the bowl game I think the big piece is, is that they know how much they've meant to this program and the direction that it's headed and as I committed to those guys as we continue to try to build a, a big 10 uh championship caliber team uh we'll be forever indebted to the the work that these guys put in the commitment that they put in, the leadership they have provided, which have afforded us this opportunity uh, December 30th. Thanks, Coach. We'll go to Varun. Hey, Coach, how are you? Hey, Varun, how you doing, man? Doing good, doing good. Um, wanted to ask, you said how last year the bowl game helped you guys and the impact that you get where it's not just spring ball is your next time to get back with these players. Last year was your first year in the bowl game with this with this group of players. Where did you see the biggest growth because of that? Well, I think probably the the development of our younger players. You know, when you bring young guys in and with this day and age of transfer portal, instant eligibility, uh, you don't have them long enough to uh, necessarily always develop them for three or four years. And so everything has been expedited. And so what we've been able to do is take these opportunities from a, a bowl practice standpoint to really develop these guys to where they can make an impact in a game like the one we'll have against NC State. And like I said, that, that's uh, something you can't put a price tag on. Uh, and it really helps players who are trying to create value for themselves with the type of practices that they're able to have going into the bowl game. And uh, any update on Rakim Jarrett's status for the bowl game? Still no update yet. Okay. Thank you. No problem. We'll go to Winston Helton. Hey, Coach Loxa, uh, first off, congratulations to you um, and the boys. Um, 
I actually wanted to get to Danny first. Danny, what was the draw with Maryland? Uh, what interested you guys in this Maryland team? Well, first of all, congratulations to Coach Larksley, and uh, we couldn't be more excited about the, this matchup. Um, a lot of it's already been referenced about the old ACC ties and 33-33 and four and uh, a really good NC State team that uh, finished the year with a win over North Carolina and already have referenced uh, uh, the Maryland games against uh, two of the top four teams in the country. And so uh, we just think it's a great matchup for Maryland fans. Uh, I think they'll really enjoy Charlotte. Uh, it's a, a wonderful uptown, a lot of things to do. You park your car, you walk everywhere. And it's just, uh, we had Clemson, Georgia in here to open the season a couple of years ago. Of course, we've had the bowl games, neutral site games. And uh, uh, people that come to Charlotte, they have a, they really uh, embrace the experience and have a fun time. And it's just uh, the proximity to everything, I think, is a, a, a differentiator for the city as well as uh, all the things that the, there are to do. So we think it's a great matchup. Uh, um, we couldn't uh, we couldn't be more pleased with having uh, uh, Maryland and NC State. I'm sure some of those ACC fans remember those Carolina ties and we'll be happy to travel down. <laughs> well, we think we'll have a great crowd and uh, Bank of America Stadium is a wonderful stadium. It's been beautifully maintained over the years. Uh, all the sight lines are great. It's easy to navigate um, uh, the circulation, both vertical and horizontally. And it's just a first class stadium. So um People that come to Charlotte, they, they'll enjoy it and have a great time. And I, I, I do uh, I do believe the players, we've gotten wonderful feedback over the years from the experiences that the players have. We don't monopolize their time. We're, we're very um, uh, strategic in just having um, events that will be fun for the players. Example, uh, the, the drive uh, at Charlotte Motor Speedway, they always have a, a great time with that the shopping spree at Belk. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a fun experience. And uh, uh, like coach Loxley said, uh, a great reward for uh, a really impressive season. And if you look at the Maryland program and the trajectory that the program's on, uh, it's a special time uh, to be at Maryland. Uh, thank you, Danny. Coach, uh, Danny kind of went right into my next question, which was, you know, you talk about building blocks of a program. How important, how pivotal was this invitation to play in a, a, another holiday season bowl? Yeah, this was huge and, and, and very much needed for us to continue the build and the climb. And, you know, I, I can tell you and Danny, I, I surprised Danny with the phone call because this was definitely one of the games that we wanted to be a part of. And, and I called Danny to let him know that this one is not just, you know, like we wanted to wait to find out, but that this is one that I know for me as the leader of the program um, really was excited about the opportunity if it was afforded to us, because I do understand the ACC footprint that we, we grew up on here, especially me growing up here right in the shadow of Maryland, uh, the University of Maryland. So um, when I saw that this was a, a possibility I wanted to let the people down there in Charlotte know, the Dukes Mayo people know that this was something that we would really like to be a part of, especially because of uh, the natural um, rivalries that go along with any of the ACC teams that that I grew up as a young coach facing here at Maryland as a young assistant in the late 90s. So uh, excited about the opportunity. I know our players are as well, and uh, really looking forward to, to getting started, game planning, and and preparing our team to go uh, finish finish the job. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll go to Kevin McNulty. Coach Lox, this one's for you. How you doing? Hey, Kevin, how are you? Good. Um, maybe the most important question you've been asked all season, are you willing to take the Mayo dump Mayo bath as in tradition in this bowl game for the winner if Maryland's mm -hmm. victorious? It's all, it, hey, it's part of the process. We are all in. We are all in. And what, what was this process like for you over the past week? You know, you said you got the players back in there on Thursday, but waiting to hear um, where you were going. Was it easy for you guys to just take care of business at home and not 
not worry about wondering where you're going? Yeah, because we're big on worrying about the things we could control. We know that we had no control over where we would be invited, but there's no doubt we had some a, a, a place, which I can tell you it was to be able to go to Charlotte, a place that, that I thought would be a great fit for our, our football family, our extended families as they try to navigate the holidays and getting down to the bowl to see their, their loved ones play in it. Um, kind of like a year ago going to New York, it's an easy trip, but except this one, we're going south and we're trying to order some great weather. So hopefully Danny can control, control the weather for us down there. But, uh, you know, for us, the players had about four days off after the Rutgers game. Uh, we got in to get them moving around Thursday, Friday, kind of took, took on what we call our OTA practices where we did a lot of individual work, a lot of back to the basics where, you know, when you get better fundamentally as a, a player, we'll get better collectively. And to me, the bowl games, the biggest things that I've learned from, you know, going to the college football playoffs there at Alabama is that how you prepare your team over the course of the next three to four weeks is really important in how you show up and play on, on game day and as, as well as the, for the continued development of your team. So, uh, we followed a pretty uh, regimented schedule and they'll have enough time off. We won't bang them up as much. And, and we got final exams coming up as well. And they'll get to spend a little time because of when this game is uh, being played, they'll get to get home for a couple of days before Christmas. And uh, I think it's a win-win for our program. We'll go to Ben Dixon. How's it going, coach? Ben, what's going on? Not much, not much. I uh, wanted to ask you about Dante Demas. You know, now that we know he's opting out and his Maryland career is over, what can you tell us, you know, final thoughts-wise about what he's been able to do for both you and the program these past five years as a Terp? Yeah, what a warrior. Um, nothing but the utmost respect for Dante. Um, I know for him this season statistically maybe didn't match up to what he would like, but I thought he played an integral role in us getting back to where we are today. Uh, the leadership this kid provided, uh, when you talk about guys and uh, perseverance and resiliency, I mean, he's the, 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 the poster child for those words because of what he's gone through uh, during his time here at Maryland and overcoming the injury to get back in time to even play this year. I have no idea uh, just what it took to be able to do that. And I've got the utmost respect uh, for Dante and the way he's led this team as one of our leaders. And uh, again, we wish him well as he moves on to the next chapter, which, in my opinion, will be playing it on Sundays and having a great career. And going off that, now that we know at least he and Jacob aren't going to play in this game, does the opportunity for your young wide receivers, obviously have a bunch of freshmen who've been able to contribute a little bit, kind of remind you of uh, what you had with Roman and Antoine last year in the Pinstripe Bowl? There's no doubt. This is why we prepare our team this way. You guys ask all the time when – we rotate players a lot. We play guys like Octavian Smith all year long. Uh, you've seen, you know, Punch, uh, Shalik Knott, who's from right there in Charlotte, uh, get very uh, meaningful minutes, as well as Leon Houghton uh, and the way he's been able to continue to develop with Ty Felton. So, um, you know, depending on where Rockham is with his injury, we feel like we're in a good space. Uh, you know, anybody that has seen this offense, when it's clicking, knows that it's, you know, we go how the quarterback goes. and. We'll always have skilled guys that have the ability to make plays for us. And the expectation is that the young receivers, because of the opportunities presented to them, will take full advantage of these. And I know they're excited about the, you know, the added work that they'll be able to get. We'll take one more from Wayne Biner. Coach, you brought in a few guys from junior college, Ami Finau and Mo Kite a few years ago, and they've taken this journey of building that culture you talked about, and now they're, they're approaching, what I assume to be their last game here. Can you talk about that journey and how you found those guys and how important they were to the middle of that defense? Yeah, you know, it's, it's one thing when you talk about Ami and Moore on defense, but then you throw in a guy like Jahari Branch and what he's been to us on the offensive side, just – you know, when we recruit junior college or transfer portal, we're looking for guys that have the ability to fill gaps. We'll, we'll never be a team that majors in, you know, taking all transfer portal or all junior college. We want to build with the high school football player, develop them as much as we can in our program, and then supplement where we have needs with guys like Ami and Mo and Jahari. 
uh, and even Challen for Al Machado, who came in and, and played some running back for us before injured, being injured. So, uh, yeah, those guys were a major part of the building blocks of the last few years. Uh, you know, there's a chance this may not be Moe's last time playing as a Terp as we continue to work. Uh, he does have one year left, possibly. And, uh, you know, I know he'll be making a decision here, uh, which I think, you know, he's leaning toward coming back and building uh, on an opportunity to create value for himself. So excited about that and excited about what those guys have been able to add to our program.